Let's go back in time. The year is 1985. Back to the Future is dominating the box office. The movie immediately becomes a classic with a cult-like following. Even though the names on the billboards read Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd, there was one other star. And it came in the form of this. Anyone who's seen Back to the Future immediately recognizes this pop culture icon. The stainless steel body and those gull wing doors, there is no mistaking what it is. But behind the facade, there's actually another story. A story of promising success and hope for a future that ended in bankruptcy, jail time, and even drug offenses. So in this Behind the Business episode, we are going to take a look at what really went wrong with DeLorean. How this pop culture icon was born from the troubles of its past. But before we continue, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be the first to be notified of new Behind the Business videos that we post every week. Let's begin. John Zachary DeLorean, born on January 6, 1925 in Detroit, Michigan. From a young age, DeLorean was someone who could do no wrong. He excelled at almost everything that he did. Whether it was studies at school or selling life insurance, he always managed to work smart and beat the system. Evident from a system he developed to target engineers that eventually sold $850,000 worth of policies in 10 months. But of course, we are not here to talk about insurance now, are we? After some part-time work at a Chrysler body shop, John developed a special interest towards automobiles. After graduation, he started work at Chrysler before being offered a better deal at Packard Motor Company, which also didn't last very long as the company folded due to financial issues. It was almost a lost cause, but John received a call from a man by the name of Oliver K. Kelly, who just so happened to be the vice president of General Motors, who recognized DeLorean's talents and offered him a position in any one of General Motors' five divisions. This was where DeLorean realized what he really wanted to do in the automotive industry. He didn't just want to create cars that ran smoothly on the roads. He wanted to create sportier, more powerful vehicles, suited for the youth of America. As soon as DeLorean was named chief engineer of his division, he led his engineering team in designing a big 389 cubic inch V8 engine from the full-size Pontiac Bonneville into the mid-size Pontiac Tempest. The result was a maneuverable but brawny car with a racing-friendly surplus of power and torque. And while General Motors had a policy that prevented engineers from fitting small cars with bigger sized engines, John found a way to work through it. Instead of selling the car as a standalone model, the larger engine would be offered as a $295 option package on the 1964 Tempest. GTO equipped coupes started at $2,852. Convertibles started at $3,081. The GTO package was an instant hit. Orders poured in and General Motors went on to sell 32,450 GTOs in its first year in production. This is when DeLorean discovered his knack for marketing. He knew that people cared about the style of a car as much as they cared about the performance. While no other company was paying attention to the fashion side of the automobile industry, that's the market that DeLorean tapped into, paying close attention to the design of the vehicle as well. This all proved worth it as he was soon promoted to become the youngest general manager of Pontiac at age 40. Four years later, he was named the youngest manager of Chevrolet, and in 1972, he was made the head of GM's North American car and truck operations. John DeLorean was in no way the typical general manager. He was flashy, flamboyant, and not afraid to make his opinion known to anyone. He also had a problem with the office politics, which led him to bring up everything he was upset about during one of his speeches. This greatly angered the upper management at General Motors, but John DeLorean did not care. Even through the controversy, DeLorean was earning himself some serious dough, but realized that he didn't want to sit in boring meetings all day. He was itching to do something new and could not sit back and do nothing. It was then that he decided to quit his job and start his own company. Enter DeLorean Motor Company Officially founded on October 24, 1975 in Detroit, DeLorean had a plan to build an ethical car a car that was safe, long-lasting, and sustainable, with a modern style, the least environmental impact, and the best value for their customers. The DeLorean car was everything that a person could ever want. Within two years, under DeLorean's leadership, the company had developed the first prototype of what would go on to become the DMC-12. The coupe's iconic look was created by Giorgetto Giugiaro, 
whose build most importantly featured a stainless steel body with gullwing doors. Its power came from a rear-mounted Peugeot Renault Volvo 2.85-liter V6 engine that produced 130 horsepower. However, this is when the company was taken over by a bunch of problems. The seed capital for the brand new DeLorean came pretty quick, but as interested as the investors were, experts feared that the car wouldn't work as well as it looked. Why? Well, because it was underpowered and not really all that safe and fuel efficient, as per DeLorean's promises. The first prototype was built in 1976, with production scheduled to start in 1979. Construction on the factory hadn't gotten underway until 1978, but by this point, the car needed quite a few changes, delaying production until 1981. Because while the car was doing pretty great in terms of its design, engine specs were the first to fall through, with the rotary being dropped first for a Ford V6 and ultimately for a Peugeot V6 with 140 horsepower. 130 for the U.S. market. Marketing of the DeLorean was very good. When the car was unveiled to the public, the pre-orders were booming. People were buying into the dream of the DeLorean. On the surface, it seemed to be smooth sailing, but behind the scenes, it was just a disaster. With limited funding, DeLorean decided to capitalize on countries in desperate need of jobs and struck a deal with the government of Belfast to open up his very first factory. Deals were made and incentives were given. It all looked like it was going to be a win-win situation, but things took a turn for the worse. Natural causes such as snowstorms that couldn't be controlled, coupled with the fact that the factory workers were inexperienced, led to multiple delays as well as a compromise in build quality. Now, these problems were worked out by 1982, and the company did produce about 9,000 units of the DMC-12. But here's the catch. The company had used up all of their funding in the process. John DeLorean went back to the British government to ask for extra money, but when Margaret Thatcher's Conservative Party came into power, she denied all government funding to private industries. It was crunch time when DMC was also obliged to pay the British government a royalty of £185, nearly $400, for each car sold, cutting into the company's per-car margins. And this wasn't it. The first wave of the company's cars came with tons of faults. Because of the prolonged production time, the company barely had any time to fully test their cars and correct any issues before the cars were shipped. With quality control issues and the bad press that DeLorean received because of them, people started returning their vehicles back and started asking for refunds. As this proved to be a huge problem for a company that was already on the brink of bankruptcy. And as a result, John DeLorean turned to extreme measures in order to make sure that his company stayed afloat. The company desperately needed funds and DeLorean decided that it was now time to take the company public and seek out private investments. However, the IPO never really materialized because of what can now be called one of the biggest scandals in the automotive industry. In 1982, CEO John DeLorean was arrested in a sting operation and a video was released where he was seen allegedly agreeing to a scheme where he would sell 220 pounds of cocaine worth $24 million in the hopes of raising money for his company to make sure that its operations don't shut down as a consequence of all the mistakes that came with their first model. According to the staff, in less than 24 hours, they had gone from believing that their company was going to receive funding to finding out that their boss had been arrested on drug charges. A week later, DMC filed for complete bankruptcy. The government wanted DeLorean to hand over the reins to DMC, which would lead to a much more relaxed sentence. But DeLorean did not give them control of DeLorean Motor Cars Limited or the DeLorean Motor Company. Instead, he agreed to provide them with control of DMC Inc., a dormant shell company that had no assets. However much struggle that was, DeLorean was eventually found to be not guilty. But by then, it was too late. His company had already fallen and lost any momentum that it had gained. So, what went wrong with DeLorean? Even though the car is now immortalized as a pop culture icon, the woes of its past were never resolved, and the DeLorean Motor Company was never resurrected. This was the story of a man who had a dream, a dream to build the ultimate sports car, but a dream that was too ambitious that it eventually consumed everything. Presently, the DeLorean still remains one of the most iconic movie cars of all time, and is still instantly recognizable. 40 years later, the company is still alive, 
In fact, you can still buy a brand new factory DeLorean built from approximately 80% genuine DeLorean parts from the 1980s that were acquired when British entrepreneur Stephen Wynn purchased the leftover inventory from DMC. A Texas company plans to build 300 replica DMC-12s with leftover parts from the 1980s, though when they'll actually get production up and running remains yet to be seen. After all of this, who knows? Maybe an even better DeLorean could come as we move into the future. So what's your favorite memory of a DeLorean? Do let us know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be the first to be notified of new behind the business videos we post every week. Be inspired and we will see you in the next one. Since you made it all the way to this point, here are two more videos that we know you are going to love. Go on, click on it. You know you want to.